Okay, so we're going to do some work now with uh, questions to do with simultaneous equations. So the first one we're going to look at is how to solve simultaneous equations with graphs. And it's telling us to draw these two graphs on this grid, uh, which will allow us then to look at uh, where the answer might be. And if the graphs are going to work and there is a solution, then the two graphs must cross each other. And the point of intersection gives us a x value and a y value from the coordinates and they're going to be where the answers for the simultaneous equations will be. So that's what we're going to hope is going to happen. Um, so let's have a look what equations we've got to draw, what functions we've got to draw. So the first one is y equals 2x plus 1. So y equals 2x plus 1. There are lots of ways to draw these graphs. Uh, we recognize it's a straight line graph because there's no um, squared powers or anything, it's power 1. So coordinates is a classic way of doing these and because the uh, grid for x goes from negative 1 to positive 4 uh, we're going to keep it simple just choose some numbers in between there um, so 0 1 and 2 so those will be our x coordinates so we need the corresponding y coordinates to get our plotting points so the function says to get the y value we double the x value and add 1 so double 0 add 1 double 1 add 1 double 2 add 1 notice the pattern goes up in twos for the y values and that's all to do with this number here, the coefficient of x called the gradient of the line. So once we've got the uh, three coordinates then we can plot them. Uh, so 0, 1, because remember this gives us the coordinate 0, 1, and then 1, 3, and 2, 5. So we've got our uh, three coordinates and what we've just got to remember about graphs guys is always draw the actual graph line through the whole graph paper on the exam question. So that's going to be labelled y equals 2x plus 1 uh, just to show that that is that particular equation. Then the other one is x plus y equals 4 and again we need some coordinates and we'll keep it simple not 1 and 2 again and this is saying whatever the x value is add something to it get an answer of 4 so 0 plus 4, 1 plus 3, 2 plus 2. So all of these will add up to give us 4, that's what the function says. So 0, 4 gets plotted, 1, 3 gets plotted, and 2, 2 gets plotted. And then again, it's a graph, so we don't just plot coordinates, we actually draw the line, which is the uh, graph itself. So when we're solving simultaneous equations, as the second part of the question says, then we need to know where the two graphs intersect, they cross each other, because that'll be the solution. And in this particular case, we can see it's here, and this has a coordinate of 1, 3. So the answer will be x equals 1, and the answer here will say y equals 3. So we think the answer to this is x equals 1 and y equals 3 but of course we should check. So 1 plus 3 is 4, yep. And then this says that the y value is twice the x value, so 2 times 1 plus 1 equals 3, and that is the y value. So again, it checks and works. So solving graphs uh, using simultaneous, sorry, solving simultaneous equations using graphs, plot the two graphs, and where they intersect will be the solution. Obviously, Solving simultaneous equations um, does quite often involve using an algebraic approach rather than a graphical approach. Problems with graphs are um, they tend to be reasonably inaccurate overall, um, particularly when you've uh, got answers that could be halves, quarters, decimals. Um, therefore, we need a more precise method, which is the algebraic approach. So here we've got a simultaneous equation, which means whatever value we find for a and b, 5 times it plus 3 times that must give me 9, and the same values, twice the a value, take away 3 times the b value, must give me an answer of 12. So simultaneous means it happens at the same time. So we know we can't solve just a single equation with two letters in, because a and b could then take an infinite number of answers to give me 9. So we need a second one to fix the values for a and b if they work of course. Sometimes uh, you get given simultaneous equations and there's no solution because the two uh, graph lines would never cross each other. So let's have a look then. So we can label these so we can follow a method and the aim always is that we want the coefficient in front of one of the letters to have the same value. So 5 and 2, both of those uh, factors of 10 
So we could uh, times this one by 2, times this one by 5, and that would give us 10a in front. Um, but these happen to have 3 in front of both of them. Different operations, but the coefficient there, the number there, 3, is the same. So this is one of those uh, examples where we don't have to do any multiplication at this stage uh, because they've already got a coefficient with the same value there, 3. Different operations to deal with, but we'll talk about that in a second. So at this stage then we've got to think, well, we've got to cancel these b's out. Um, if I took away these two equations from each other, then I'd be saying 3, take away, take away. That would make that an add, and therefore we'd be saying this would become 6 b's. It doesn't get rid of the b's. So we're going to have to add these two equations, uh, because we've got 3, add, take away 3, which would make 0. So we're going to add the equations, so we've got 7 a's, those go to 0 when you add, and 9 plus 12 is 21. Uh, we want to know the value of a single a, so we divide by 7 on both sides of the equals, so a is 3. So we think the value of a is 3, so we put a equals 3 into, it doesn't matter which one we choose, but um, I'm going to choose a in this example, and then the other one I'll choose b, just it doesn't really matter which one you do. So um, we're going to substitute that value in, so when we go through um, equation a, we're saying 5, lots of the a value, so 5 times what we think is the a value of 3, plus 3 times the b value gives me an answer of 9. So 5 3 is a 15, plus 3b equals 9. So this is just like a normal equation that we have to go through and solve. So we've got to look at this idea of rearranging this to make b the subject. So we're going to take away 15 from both sides, and 15 take away 15 is 0, so that's going to leave us with 3b here. 9 take away 15 is negative 6. We want the value of 1b, so we divide by 3, and so b is worth negative 2. So we now think we know the two values for a and b. So this is where it's most important uh, with all equation work. We must check that we get the answers to work in the statements we were originally given. We've already used equation a, so we check in the other equation b. So we're saying 2 times the a value, which we think is 3 plus, oh it's not plus, sorry, let's take away, take away 3 times what we think is the b value of negative 2, and the answer should be 12, so let's have a look if we get 12, so 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so we've got 6, take away negative 6, well that becomes 6, add 6, so that is 12, so happy days, we've got a solution, that seems to work for both equations. So that's um, one example. Um, we'll do another algebraic one, um, just to give you an idea of what happens when the coefficients are not the same straight away. And so if we look at this equation, then we can see that it's saying solve the simultaneous equations 3x plus 7y is 26 and so forth, so we'll label that A, label the next one B. Now we've got a choice here, uh, we need the value in front of the number in front of the x, call the coefficient to be the, become the same, so we could make them 12, because 3 goes into 12 as a factor and 4 goes into 12 as a factor, or we could make the y's have the same number in front by making them 35, 7 goes into 35 as a factor and 5 goes into 35 as a factor. Um, I'm going to stick to the lower number and I'm going to make these become 12, so I'm going to take equation a and I'm going to times it by 4. Um, got to remember a key point here that if we multiply any term by something, all terms must be multiplied to, um, by the same number to make it equal. It's all about balancing again. So 4 times 3x is 12x, 4 times 7y, 28y, 4 times 26, 104. And equation B to make this become 12x, we have to treble it so times by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12x, 5 times 3 is 15y and uh, 13 times 3 is 39. Again, we ask ourselves the question, we're trying to get a single letter left of whatever we do, so if I want these 12 x's to now cancel each other out, then or eliminate each other, then adding them wouldn't work, because that would give me 24 x, so I'm going to have to do a takeaway sum. So write down what you're doing, so we're doing a takeaway now. So we've got 12 x's, take away 12 x's, so that means the x's have gone. And then we've got 28 y's, take away 15 y's, which is going to be 13 y. 104 take away 39, 65. Uh, the usual thing then guys, um, because we've got 13 y's, we want the answer for 1 y, so we divide by 13, and we balance by doing the same to the other side of the equals. So 65 divided by 13 is 5. 
So we now know that we think y is a value of 5. So we put y equals 5 and we'll do it into equation B this time. Um, it really doesn't matter whether we chose A or B. Um, we're just going to check uh, that we can get an answer for A and B the letter from it. So equation B said we'll take 4 lots of x plus 5 lots of y. Well we think we know the value of y and we want the answer to become 13. So 4x plus 25 equals 13. So we rearrange this to get x on its own to be the answer. So we're going to take away 25 first from both sides. That becomes 0. 13 take away 25, negative 12. Now we can deal with the term with the letter in it. So we, take, we do the term with the letter last. That's why we did the 25 bit first. And then we divide by 4. So x is going to be negative 3. Remember, negative 12 shared into 4 piles, each of them will be negative 3. So x is worth negative 3. So we think that's going to be the solution to both letters. So we've used equation B to get one of the values. Now we must check in the last equation we didn't use is A. So we're going to look at A. It says 3 lots of the x value. So 3 lots of negative 3. Notice again, substitution in a bracket so we can see carefully what we're doing. Then we're adding 7 lots of the y, so 7 times the 5. So 3 lots of negative 3 is negative 9, 7 times 5 is 35. Uh, with all these kind of sums, we can uh, change it around, put the positive thing first. So 35 take away 9 is equal to 26, not a problem, that's what we wanted. So that's an example of solving simultaneous equations. Um, it shouldn't be too bad if you practice a little bit, guys. Uh, just be careful if there's negatives involved. Um, just think of your rules and uh, how negatives work, and then uh, you should be okay. The key thing, though, is check. If you don't get the answer you want in the check section, it's usually because you've uh, done a takeaway when you should have done an add, or the other way around, you've done an add when you should have done a takeaway. So go back through your working. If you've shown clear working, go back through it and check that you haven't made that kind of mistake. Good luck with these. Practice will get you there.